The world, you know, is full of suffering. And because of the many difficulties in this world, many times we give up. Even believers, we give up on our very own inheritance. But I want to let you know this day that Jesus overcame all kinds of suffering. Hello, welcome there. That was a snippet from our speaker today. There's more to come. Thank you for making time with us today on the CBS Family Service. I will be your moderator. My name is Reverend Grace Bukachi, and I am joined by our amazing worship team from CBS. Won't you join us in praise and worship as we celebrate Palm Sunday together? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And welcome this morning. I welcome you to rise up on your feet and join us even as you worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is worthy of our praise, of the glory, of the honor. Yeah. Buona ma buona peo is
I know you watching out there from your house, your hospital bed, wherever you are, have been blessed by the ministry in worship from this amazing team serving with me today. Stay with us. There's more worship coming after the sermon. Today, we are joined uh, uh, by the Deputy Bishop here at Christ is the Answer Ministries, Reverend Justice Mugambi, as he takes us through an inspiring message on Jesus Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Our hashtag today is taking new territories. Hashtag taking new territories. Hashtag Hosanna in the highest. It's now time to hear our speaker today. Help me welcome our speaker, Reverend Justice Mugambi. Good morning to each one of us this morning. Uh, I bring you greetings and these are Easter greetings. Uh, we are entering into a very uh, conspicuous season in the life of the church. And today, Sunday, this is called Farm Sunday. It, it marks a very uh, difficult season for Jesus. And uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a major season that begins from, if you read from the book of Luke, from chapter 19, it narrates the events of the whole week of what Jesus goes through. And uh, today I want to share a bit about what Jesus went through, uh, basically uh, uh, his life on the cross. And uh, the reasons, the topic of what I want to share today is why the reasons why Jesus could not go down from the cross. And our text is Mark chapter 15, verse 21 to verse 32, which I read. Says a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of, scar, of the scar. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would take. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. Verse 27, they crucified two rebels or thieves with him, one on his, on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by held insults at him shaking their hands and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, said, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way that the, the thief, I mean the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of the Israel, Come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Brothers and sisters, as I've said this morning, this Passion Week was the most difficult and stressful season for Jesus all his life. From Monday to Sunday, Jesus went through a very difficult season. And the Bible tells us when at last on Friday they crucified him, there were several, when you read verse 29 to verse 30, people mocked him and even asked him to come down from the cross. And for sure, it was not a very easy time for Jesus. The Bible records in verse 29 to verse 32, those who passed by held insults at him, shaking their hands, and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross. The sea priest also, and the, uh, and the elders and the teachers of the people also said the same, come down now from the cross that we may, you may, we may see and believe. Jesus could, could have come down from the cross if he wanted. Because the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 26, verse 53 to 54, that, you know, this is what it says. Do you think I cannot call on my father and you will at once put an, and dispose at my disposal more than 12 legions of, of angels? 
But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that, it, that say it must happen this way? Jesus could have come down from the cross if he wanted, because he is God. He had the power to do that. But he could not come down from the cross. And there are many reasons why Jesus stuck on that cross, though it was painful and frustrating. But today we look at only four reasons why Jesus could not come out of the cross. Number one is because Jesus wanted to give us victory over suffering. The world, you know, is full of suffering. And because of the many difficulties in this world, many times we give up. Even believers, we give up on our very own inheritance. But I want to let you know this day that Jesus overcame all kinds of suffering. Look at what Jesus went through. He was betrayed by his very close friend, Judas. And that's what we read in the book of Mark chapter 14, verse 44. Now the betrayer and arranged a sign with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away at a guard. And what we are saying this morning, friends, friends will betray you. And I'm sure... We know many of, uh, many of us, or do you know people, who have been betrayed by very closest friends. Not only in politics, but in business, even in family circles. Jesus was betrayed by one of the twelve, one of the trusted men. Secondly, he was denied three times by one of the trusted friends. The Bible records in the book of Mark chapter 14, verse 71, he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I do not know this man you are talking about. That is Peter, the very trusted person that Jesus and the disciples trusted. We want to let you know, I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, that even friends will betray you. Not only will they betray you, but they will also deny you openly that they do not know you. We are also told in Mark chapter 14, verse 50, all the other disciples ran away from him in his hour of need. The Bible says in, yes, in chapter 14, verse 50 of the book of Mark, then everyone deserted him and he fled. We are saying this morning, <coughs> friends will not only betray you, friends will not only deny you, but they will also desert and flee from you. At your very hour of need. People were also falsely accused you. Jesus was falsely accused. You know, he was accused falsely by the religious leaders of his day, by the elders of his day, by the teachers of the law, by the priest, by the son Edwin. It is recorded in Mark chapter 14, verse 55 to 56. The chief priests and the whole son Edwin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but the statements did not agree. We are saying this morning, you know, people will falsely accuse you. And I'm sure there are people who are going through a lot of pain because of accusations that are false. We also said that he was taken through the mockery of, of a trial that was on Thursday night before the Jews' religious leaders, before the Roman authorities, that is Pilate, Herod, and went to Pilate again. You know, he was beaten. He was spit on. He was blindfolded, put on the, you know, put on the, a crown of thorns. Jesus went through a very difficult season. You read that in Mark chapter 15, verse 16, and to verse 20. He was also put together with criminals. The Bible says he was crucified between two thieves. They accused him of the sins that he did not even commit. Even without sin, he was, he was, he was accused. And he was put among the, 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 the criminals so that he would look like a criminal. People can sing Hosanna today like they did on Farm Sunday when Jesus was entering into Jerusalem. A Sunday like today, they will sing Hosanna to you, but crucify you tomorrow. People are with you, and for you, when you are maybe wealthy and rich, 
and you have a lot of good days and good things to offer. But when it comes to your hour of need, the same people might crucify you. The Bible says they followed Jesus because he healed them and he also fed them. That's what the Bible records. When they were hungry, he fed them. However, when it came to his hour of need, they were not there for him. We are saying this morning, brothers and sisters, Jesus could not come down from the cross because he wanted to gain victory over suffering. And later we see that he overcame even the very death on the cross. Jesus also wanted, secondly, to win victory for us over sin. You know, his love, his love brought salvation to us. Jesus and the power to get down of the, out of the cross, down from the cross, but he could not do so because he loved us. He could see the hopelessness of man under every burden of sin. He said that he laid down his life for our sake. When you read John chapter 15, verse 12 to verse 15, the Bible says, the Bible says my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. He says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Hallelujah. Jesus laid his life for his friends. He laid his life down for us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, Paul records and says, For God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It is the love that held him on the cross. The story of, you know, we have stories of people who have died, who have died trying to rescue one another. We have, I was told of a story of a mother here in the city, in one of the sections of the city of Nairobi, who when the house caught fire and the mother knew that the son was there, she ran and to grab the child and the fire was consumed, both of them. Brothers and sisters, what held Jesus on the cross? was his love for us. Without love, there is no salvation. Jesus, Jesus, the word of God tells us in the book of, I mean in the gospels, that he had compassion on us. He had compassion on his people. It is compassion. It is love that held him on the cross. In John chapter 3, verse 16, that we know so well, for God so loved the world that he gave his own, only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We were to perish, but now we are God's children, bought by his very precious blood. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul captures this very well for us. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to verse 17, he says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Says the grace of our Lord Jesus was poured on me abundantly with the faith, with faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. We are saying that Paul is saying, your friends, that he was condemned. He is an example of that which was that one who was condemned. He says in verse 15, here is a trustworthy saying that disturbs full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of which I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Paul underlines this fact that he was the worst of sinners. None of us can claim to be more sinful than Paul, who was totally hopeless, persecuting the church. But God felt mercy on him. And that's why he, is, he says here that grace was poured upon him. That is why Jesus could not come out of the cross. It's because he wanted to gain victory for us from sin. And thirdly, 
Christ could not come out of the cross, though he was challenged by the priests and the elders and the Sanhedrin and even the thieves and other people around him. He could not come out of the cross because he wanted to gain victory over sickness and disease. Jesus healed the sick when he was here and all kinds of diseases. We hear that he even raised Lazarus from the dead when we read the word of God. He also healed the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to verse 34. He healed the 10 lepers in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to verse 19. He healed Jairus' daughter when you read Mark chapter 5, verse 21 to 24, and then verse 35 to verse 43. Jesus healed the centurion servant in the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 1 to verse 10. I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, he's going to the cross, he's hanging there on the cross, he's dead on the cross, brought healing, victory over every form of sickness and disease. Prophet Isaiah declares this, by the, he says in Isaiah chapter 39, you can read verse 1 to verse 9, he concludes there, he says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. In other words, Jesus took our infirmities away on the cross. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, he says, the Bible records, Jesus himself says, you will lay your hands on the sick and they will get well. It is true, Jesus is our healer. Doctors treat, but God heals. He heals through medicine, true, but God also heals miraculously. I have experienced his healing many times in my life. I have prayed for people in my in, in in ministry and i have seen god bring healing and i can tell you brothers and sisters that know that god will heal everybody but god has the power to heal hallelujah the fourth reason why jesus could not get out of the cross is because jesus won victory over death hallelujah we have seen that jesus won victory over sickness and disease Jesus gave us victory over sin. Jesus gave us victory over, over suffering. And so not only, you know, with suffering, defeated. You know, with sin, defeated, and now we are living free. And of course, with sicknesses and diseases, as uh, you know, defeated. Jesus ultimately defeated, number four, the greatest enemy of man, and that is death. Because Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. Bible reckons in Mark chapter 15 <clears throat> from verse 37, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Yes, he died. And he was buried by Joseph of Amadea, <coughs> excuse me, who was a prominent member of the council. And they believed in Jesus because he was waiting for the kingdom of God in Mark chapter 42 and 42 to 47. And of course, at his death, Matthew records that many believers came from the dead in Jerusalem and they were seen by many. <coughs> Jesus not only just overcame death at that particular moment, we see that some people came from, the, you know, resurrected from their graves. Did look what, what Matthew records in chapter 27, verse 51 to 53. It is also recorded, <coughs> it is recorded that resurrected from the dead, <coughs> that he resurrected from the dead and ascended into heaven. When you read Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 7, to verse 11, it is recorded that Jesus rose and before their very eyes, he rose and went to heaven. And he said, the way he has gone, the way he will come. It is an historical fact, brothers and sisters, that Jesus <coughs> is risen. The Roman government was intelligent enough to produce the body of Jesus <coughs> if he was not, if he, you know, if he was still on the grave. But on Sunday, his grave was empty. The poor records, in Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 12, 54 to 55. Death has now been swallowed up in victory. Where whole death is your victory, where whole death is your sting. Hallelujah. Victory over death. And this is the greatest victory 
that the believers would ever have. I want to conclude by brothers and sisters by saying that he died, <coughs> he rose again, but we also need to believe that he is coming back again. And this coming back of Jesus, it is one of the, it is the greatest hope of the believer. Records in Acts chapter 1, verse, 11, verse 10 to 11. This, Jesus, this same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is what keeps our hope alive, that we know Jesus is coming back again. And Paul tells the believers that he is coming again. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 18. I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, Jesus could not come out of the cross, though he had the power to do so, because he wanted to win victory over death. He could not come out of the cross because he wanted to give us victory over sicknesses and disease that trouble us. He also could not come out of the cross because he wanted to give us salvation through his great love that took him to the cross. And he also could not come out of the cross because he wanted to show us and to gain victory from suffering. And so we can surrender to God. We can surrender to Jesus. We can surrender every sickness to Jesus. We can surrender every suffering to Jesus. And because he overcame, we shall also overcome. May the Lord bless you as you celebrate this season that is like no other for the Christian, for the church history, and for the believer. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Mugambi, for that thought-provoking and inspiring lesson. Thank you, Pastor Grace. Happy Palm Sunday. Thank you, and happy, uh, the happy Palm Sunday too. Thank and you. And happy Easter. Yes, happy Thank Easter. You. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you. Please share the lessons and takeaways from the sermon this morning in the chat section. If it's evening, please do the same thing. Just share the things that you've learned from this sermon today. But for now, let's pause and reflect in a time of prayer. Almighty and everlasting Father, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary. And thank you that you did it all for each one of us, that we could have access to the Father. And so we bless you and praise you and we honor you. And we pray that you will continually speak to our hearts as we enter this Easter Passion Week, as we celebrate not your triumphal entry, but even your sacrifice on the cross, we have been reminded at this, in this sermon. We ask this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Help me welcome our worship team once again as we give God thanks for ministering to us in this service today. Thank you, Lord. You are here with us today. You make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord. You are a faithful Father. Your promises are yes and amen. And as we declare today, God, we know your healing hearts and you're touching your people, Lord. You are here. You are here. Have your way as we bow down. You are here. You are here now. Have your way as we bow down. Here I am. Here I am.
shall we pray for the offering. Almighty and everlasting Father, thank you for giving us Jesus, your only son. And as we celebrate this Easter season, we thank you, Lord, that you chose to hang on that cross. You took our shame, you took our guilt, you took our pain on yourself. And we are grateful that we can give for the furtherance of your kingdom. Be exalted, Lord Jesus, and be glorified. For we ask this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Kindly watch the clip that is about to run, giving you directions on how to give your offerings. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at SIDM. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITM PayPal numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 011-280-617-639. The SWIFT code K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. On Wednesday at 6 p.m., we will have a live prayer service when you can send us your prayer requests and our pastors will bring them before the Lord Jesus Christ in a time of prayer. Please keep tweeting and post. Share the link for today's special interview. And remember to use our hashtag, hashtag taking new territories. Mm -hmm. Hashtag taking new territories and hashtag Hosanna in the highest. Happy Palm Sunday. Please remember to use the annual Bible study guide this week for further study on our theme for 2024. If you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your savior today, please let us know by contacting the following WhatsApp number 0728-221-221. Allow me to repeat the number again if you're listening on the radio, 0728 221 221. It's on your screen for those of you who are watching online or on TV. We will be sure to follow up with you this coming week. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Have a wonderful Easter week and God bless you. Shall we pray? Sovereign Lord, we thank you and we bless you. We ask that you would bless us indeed, that you would make your face to shine upon us that you would be gracious to us. You would let your countenance shine on every last one of us in our going out and our coming in throughout this week. We ask this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.